And joining us now, Harris Campaign Senior Advisor Ian Sams. Ian, we know it's a busy stretch you're on here. Thanks for spending time with us. One strategist told NBC News that Democrats have nauseous optimism that Harris will win. We, of course, have shown how close the polls are. Is nauseous optimism the message the campaign wants the party projecting to voters in this closing stretch? Well, look, it's going to be a really close race. We've been saying this uh, for the last several months, that in all seven battleground states, we're seeing a margin of error race. This thing's going to tip one way or another. There may be certain states that fall into our camp and some that fall into former President Trump's camp. It's going to really come down to Election Day tomorrow. We're encouraged by what we see in the early voting. We're seeing good turnout among African-American voters. You're seeing this historic uh, gap of women turning out more than men across the battleground states. I think that you hit the nail on the head in your segment just now about the absolute salience and importance of reproductive freedom in this election uh, and women out there in the country uh, being fed up with what Trump did and ready to turn the page on it. I think we can't underestimate the energy that we're seeing from women across this country in this election. But it will come down to tomorrow. Uh, we believe that the election day turnout tomorrow will be decisive. Uh, and we're looking forward to uh, the voters turning out tomorrow and, and electing Kamala Harris president. And we're showing uh, live pictures from uh, Wisconsin, where uh, Governor Walls is attending uh, another meet and greet, it seems like. And you know, Vice President Harris has now visited Pennsylvania 18 times and will be there for her closing campaign tonight. What's the strategy on one state versus visiting others in these final 24 hours? Well, we've been to all seven uh, battleground states this week. The vice president has taking her message everywhere. We're not leaving any state uh, off the map. Uh, it's a historic situation where literally all seven battleground states remain very much in play, usually by this point of a campaign. Uh, you know, you have a couple of states that you may be writing off. We're not writing off any states. We believe that we have a chance to win all seven. We, need, we think that all seven are within the margin of error and are going to be close. It's very obvious that former President Trump feels the same. He's going back to North Carolina, you know, four or five times just in the last few days. Uh, and that's a state he won in 2020. So he's playing defense to try to keep that in his column. And Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania is critical. It's one of the biggest battleground states. It was decided by five-figure vote uh, share in 2020. Uh, Vice President Harris has been there a lot, campaigning not just in the cities, but also in the suburban, exurban, and rural areas of the state to continue building her momentum. Today, for example, she's going to be in the Puerto Rican community across uh, different regions of the state. Obviously, we're seeing uh, the new Univision poll that came out last night showing just how unpopular among Puerto Rican and among Latino voters in Pennsylvania specifically Donald Trump's disastrous rally at Madison Square Garden was. We're seeing in that poll two-thirds of Latinos in Pennsylvania going for Vice President Harris. We want to continue that momentum and make sure that they hear the choice in this election uh, between going back to Donald Trump and the division and the hatred that he shares and spreads uh, in this country, the way that he tries to divide communities uh, based on race, and Vice President Harris, who actually thinks we can turn the page on all that and move forward with priorities that actually help their lives. And so she's going to be sharing that message in those communities today, obviously culminating in major rallies tonight, both in Pittsburgh and in Philadelphia, where turnout is going to be so important. Ian, you talked about some encouraging signs in the early voting, gender being one of them. In the 2020 election, though, you may remember early voting absentee ballots largely were cast by Democrats. And when you look at the party registration breakdown here, our analysis so far shows Republicans are coming out early in big numbers this time around. In Arizona, for example, Republicans make up 9 percent more than Democrats of the early votes cast. In Nevada, 4 percent more. In Georgia, 3 percent more. Even in North Carolina, 1 percent more. Should Democrats worry about that shift? No, I don't think that we should be worried about that shift going into Election Day. There's a couple of factors at play here. Uh, one, in 2020, former President Trump was running around telling everybody that early voting was fraudulent and bad and no one should do it. This year, they're telling their voters to vote early. Uh, so they are encouraging it. We are seeing in the data that a lot of the Republican vote in early vote are people who voted for President Trump on Election Day in past cycles. And so they are just casting their ballots earlier. And we've also seen since 2020, when COVID was dictating a lot of the way that people were participating in the process, Democrats are more interested in voting on Election Day than they were four years ago. Obviously, there was a lot of concern about COVID four years ago. We saw in the midterms in 2022, and we're seeing indications 
based on the early voting patterns here, that you may see higher turnout among Democrats uh, or supporters of Vice President Harris more broadly on Election Day tomorrow. And so I think when you look at those numbers right now, we're, we're very encouraged, as I mentioned before, by the, the gender gap that we're seeing in the early vote. You're seeing stories come out about the concerns that former President Trump has about them not hitting the numbers that they want among men and among seniors in the early vote. You've been talking about the Des Moines Register poll. You know, you know, Iowa, you know, we're focused on the battleground states, not particularly uh, on the polling results of the head to head in Iowa. But some of the interesting data you saw there, especially among seniors, we are seeing indi indications across some of the battleground states that Donald Trump is not hitting the number he wants to hit among seniors. And so when you just look at these gaps in the early vote, we feel confident going into tomorrow that we are hitting our numbers with the early vote that we expected based on the patterns that we've seen since 2020, post-COVID and post-pandemic. And we think that the election is going to come down tomorrow to the kind of turnout that we see on Election Day across the battleground states.